Hi and welcome. Today we are going to talk about WeWork and some ways that it can revitalize itself as a company to be able to continue to thrive in the future. As you know, WeWork has had a challenging year as many of us have had, personally, professionally. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected us all, but out of adversity, innovation can reveal itself. I really believe that, and a quote that I really like from Martin Luther King Jr. is, out of a mountain of despair, a stone of hope. WeWork has certainly shown its potential in the past, and they still possess it. That's sort of at its core. It's a dynamic, charismatic company, really innovative, and all of that energy is still part of the company at its core and its essence and its identity. So it can definitely be accomplished helping WeWork sort of recover from a tricky year. And we're gonna look at some ways that we can make that happen. It hasn't been easy for WeWork. Not long ago, they were a startup darling that was lauded as an innovator, disruptor, change agent, whatever word you wanna use. And they attracted small businesses and entrepreneurs alike with flexible, affordable, short-term co-working leases. Within the past 14 months though, it hasn't been so easy for WeWork. The reputation has plummeted and they faced some setbacks. What setbacks? In September, 2019, they withdrew its initial public offering or IPO filing request, largely in part due to mounting outside pressure from one of its key investors, SoftBank. And this was considered by industry leaders as an IPO fail. It was picked up by a lot of news outlets, including the Wall Street Journal. That same month, co-founder and then chief executive officer, Adam Newman was ousted from WeWork and forced to resign again from external pressure from, from close advisors, investors, and the like. And then in April, 2020, SoftBank rescinded a separate agreement for an additional tender of $3 billion in WeWork shares. That was not part of the IPO. WeWork was a private company, still is, but SoftBank considered uh, some profit sharing deal and then they backed out of it. So on top of these challenges, obviously we've gone through coronavirus. We've all seen how that has affected friends, family, coworkers, the global economy. So in September 2019, WeWork had already laid off 2,400 people because of its IPO fail. And then in March 2020, it laid off an additional 250 employees. Then in June 2020, co-founder Miguel McKelvey announced his departure from the company. So it is not an easy time for us to embark on a plan to reevaluate WeWork, but we can do it. And we'll take some new ideas, but it's totally possible and we can make it happen. So how do we do this? How do we get started? We have some separate yet overlapping circumstances surrounding WeWork, coronavirus, change in leadership, layoffs, its viability as a public company. But after some deliberation, I propose the following tripronged systems-based intervention. Appoint a chief risk officer, perform a baseline study of current attitudes toward WeWork by utilizing an employee engagement survey, and engage an organizational management consultant or consulting firm to assist with a corporate realignment and strategic planning. WeWork did receive some good news recently. In August 2020, WeWork received new financing from SoftBank in the amount of 1.1 billion. This shows that SoftBank still has some skin in the game. It's quite interested in recouping its investment with WeWork and it still has its confidence in the company and it's willing to lend assistance. With this in mind, appointing an investor relations officer will be huge to WeWork. An investor relations officer does a lot. They are a two-way communication channel between a company and the financial community. They can do securities law, compliance, marketing, finance, and strategic management responsibilities. So we have a strategic manager who is multidisciplinary, a strong communicator, and has sound financial expertise. This will help elevate WeWork's presence among stakeholders, and it will also help with relationship building, current relationships as well as business development efforts for new relationships for capital funding. 
As we work, we'll also want to revisit the prospect of an IPO potentially in the future. Bringing on an IRO will be a great first step in establishing credibility and trustworthiness among stakeholders. So we've hired our investor relations officer. What's next? Let's turn to employee morale and attitudes towards WeWork. Why would we do this? Why do we care about our employees? Why is this important? Well, it's been tough for WeWork staff. They've gone through a lot this year. They've seen coworkers laid off. They saw their leader leave. And they are facing possibly unemployment rates depending on the city they're in. I know here in New York City, it's been really tough. And they may be worried about their future with the company and morale may be low. So where does that leave staff and what's expected of them? And possibly some staff may be wandering and considering other options, preemptively resigning, moving on to a more secure job before another potential round of layoffs. This is where an employee engagement survey comes in and really helps companies. Employee engagement surveys can provide really critical data, such as organizational commitment and job satisfaction. It's a way of communicating to staff that the leadership team wants to hear from them, cares about their input, and is supportive of candid feedback. So once we have this information, we can make clear efforts, such as internal career development opportunities for employees, finding out what matters to employees so they are most satisfied with work, which can then lead to higher job performance. That's a very well-known correlation. A lot of research backs that. A more satisfied employee performs better. So by fortifying their workforce, WeWork can remain a strong competitor uh, as a startup, a strong contender with top talent making it more attractive for job seekers who will then want to work at WeWork, retaining current employees, and being able to show investors that they are able to drive outcomes, be profitable, be successful, and retain their competitive edge by having the best talent in the business. So we have our investor relations officer, and we have great data and output results from employee engagement surveys. What is next? So here, I think a management consulting firm or consultant is clutch to bring added value to WeWork. In a February 2020 press release, WeWork did announce that it has a new chief executive officer, Sandeep Mithrani, and they are really, WeWork, when I say they, really reconsidered its direction with, with Mithrani at the helm. So when an organization appoints a new leader, a management consultant can help ease the transition and keep the company on track to achieve future goals. WeWork already sort of established this. Mithrani publicly stated that WeWork has outlined a clear five-year strategic plan built around six pillars that guides growth-led transformation. So this is a critical juncture for WeWork to have the opportunity for true organizational change and transformation, to learn from its mistakes, to grow, and to be strategic and risk conscious. And a management consultant can help with that. It can really help bring about long-term organizational change that's positive. The decision to hire a consultant is also usually made by someone at the top, a C-level, C-suite, leadership team, board of directors, you name it. So in this case, WeWork will be able to steer the ship, so to speak, to find a consultant who they have really good chemistry with, that they collaborate well with, to contribute to planned decision making and using managerial choice to respond to external factors such as market conditions, specifically coronavirus, as well as having the consultant provide input and perhaps clarity on a strategic plan and a realignment plan and growth for the company. I recommend that we work undergo a fair bidding process, which is par for the course from at least three independent consultants so they can review fees, expenses, guarantees, and what the deliverables are, what a consultant will bring to the table. Whoever they choose, I really suggest, I highly recommend, I really suggest and highly recommend that the consultant has cross-functional expertise in organizational effectiveness and real estate. So functional consultant, organizational effectiveness, 
and industry specific in terms of real estate. Functionally, the consultant can help pinpoint corporate outcomes as part of its realignment plan, as I mentioned. Industry specific, it can help brainstorm with WeWork about what's next for WeWork. I know that a majority of the workforce globally is still working remotely, myself included. So what does that mean for WeWork? And also, what are some real estate opportunities that may be viable in the current climate? I know that a lot of large corporations are canceling their commercial leases. So maybe they still need satellite space for important meetings and things like that to hold in-person interviews. There's a lot of opportunity. There is not, the need for in-person office space is not going to become obsolete. There are still going to be different areas in different industries and companies that will still need that to some extent. I truly believe that. So a consultant will be able to help with transformational change for WeWork by analyzing their real estate leverage, uh, their real estate sort of um, strength or clout, if you will. It will help them also be strategic. What is their strategic plan? What is their realignment plan? Is it feasible? Is it a practical operating model? These are all things a consultant can help define and really provide clarity on. This is what consultants do all the time for companies. And once again, an objective, neutral outside perspective is invaluable in times of crises for companies. So to summarize, while WeWork has had its fair share of unfavorable circumstances recently, the company still has amazing potential that offers unique options for people that need modern, fairly priced co-working spaces, and even for companies that need that in order to conduct business. When applied conjunctively, my three systems-based intervention that I've outlined will reestablish WeWork as a solid, trustworthy company with the appointment of investor relations officer. It will be a great company to invest in and the IRO will be able to relay that and promote that image and provide a really polished reputation for WeWork to external stakeholders. An employee and engagement survey will be able to take the pulse, so to speak, of current employees and what they're thinking, whether they're thinking of leaving, if they're not happy, if they have any suggestions. That is really great information to have to help shift a little bit to re-mobilize, re-stabilize your workforce. And lastly, um, organizational transformation with the help of a management consultant. And that will really help WeWork be well equipped, not only with a strategic plan that is brainstormed around the same three or four C-suite executive leaders, which can be, um, it can sort of be, it can be, it can be, um, it can end up, I guess I should say, it can end up uh, in groupthink as a, um, it can, groupthink can occur. I am so sorry. Groupthink can occur as a result of just reviewing and editing a, reviewing and editing a strategic plan among the same three or four people. So an outside perspective can be great to help with the strategic plan, but also making sure it's applicable it is something that is scalable, it can be implemented, and it can really target the organizational change that WeWork wants and needs to some extent, and what uh, WeWork wants to achieve in the future in terms of profitability, in terms of culture, uh, in terms of a lot of different factors. Thank you once again for joining me today. I really enjoyed sharing my findings with you and I hope you enjoyed the presentation.